Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. Corey and Chad here chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. Now Jordan, I was off for about a week and a half there and I was watching these markets as I always do and just kept noticing, quite frankly, how well gold was doing and unfortunately still how a lot of the juniors were struggling there's still a number of juniors that are doing well, and some of these mining companies have had nice bounces. But the fact of the matter is, gold is close to all-time highs, let's say, and a lot of these stocks well off, way further off any all-time highs. I know a lot of people are looking at this monthly close coming up in just a couple days, looking at around that 1960-ish level and saying that could really be a nice driver for gold if it could close the month around that level it'd be the highest monthly close however when you look at the gold chart it really seems like look it's so close to all-time highs we just quite frankly need a breakout and gold to finally hold above let's say 2100 jordan how are you balancing out this upcoming monthly close that looks like it will be very strong in a historical sense for gold but then still up against a breakout a true breakout in the gold price well, I I know that everybody's watching the, the close to the end of this week, and yes, it will be significant. I'm looking at the 1950 to 1985 zone. That's really where the resistance is. And um, I think if if gold were to make a daily close above 2,000 today or tomorrow, and we're speaking on Wednesday, that would be pretty significant. If it's able to, you know, close above 1985 on Friday, I think you could probably see a move to 2100 in the short term. Maybe it's able to break above that. So that's something I'm definitely watching in the very short term. But even if it doesn't happen and gold were to fall below 1950 on Friday and close below 1950, that wouldn't really bother me that much. I mean, I, I like the macro fundamental backdrop of where things are trending. If you look at gold against the S&P 500, it touched a two-year high high recently. It's flirting around it now. It's possible that we might get another bear market rally in the stock market because of sentiment and positioning is on the bearish side. Some indicators are indicating that there's extremes in bearish sentiment. So that's a possibility. But you know, and aside from that, gold against foreign currencies has made a new all-time high recently. So, and at the same time, I mean, the Federal Reserve, I think, is really going to be in a pickle where they want to be able to keep hiking rates. But, you know, I, I think there's the risk that something else could break in the coming weeks or coming months. And at the same time, looking at the overall economy, we've talked in re- recent weeks about how these yield curve inversions are really pointing to a recession in the third quarter. So you factor all these things in and the market, I mean, the bond market again, I mean, we've talked about it in recent weeks, how the bond market is really the best leading indicator and it's really sensing the shift in fed policy. So I think that the fed, I mean, they'll try and fight it and really hold off from cutting rates, but they're going to have to cut rates at some point this year. So w- whether that happens sooner than later, it, same thing with the gold breakout. It doesn't, it's not going to bother me if gold's not able to break out here and it has to correct for a couple months or even three or four months. Even if something like that happens, we're in a really, really good position for this market. I mean, this is a historic breakout that's going to happen. It's going to usher in a new cyclical bull, but also a new secular bull. So I think we're in really good position. And even though some stocks and some juniors may be lagging and struggling i mean i i you know look at some of mine and i you know the ones that are lagging i point to fundamental reasons so i'm not concerned if if you know the stocks or some juniors are lagging or struggling i think that you know once we get that real breakout a new real bull market going you'll see capital will flow down the food chain so to speak and uh, you know we'll see that participation across the board so we're we're entering into an exciting time, you know, regardless of if gold's able to make that close above 1985 this week or not. It's it's we're going to be in a really exciting period for this sector. Yeah, Jordan, that's kind of what I was going to ask you was if it does or if it doesn't this week, 
to close the month and quarter, get above that 1953 or that 1985 level, does it ultimately really matter if the larger uptrend is going to be a breakout in gold and that rising tide will eventually lift all boats? I guess from the bearish side of things, do you see anything that could derail that at this point? You've talked about some of the fundamental things like the gold versus foreign currencies, and gold versus equities, but is there anything on the technicals where you think it could be a failed breakout or, or are you pretty confident at this point that it's coming? It's just a matter of this week or a couple months from now, one of those kind of things. How, how do you see the setup? Is there a bearish thesis where it doesn't break out? The bearish thesis would be that you've had this huge record move in the bond market, you know, a, a record decline in bond yields. And so the bearish thesis would be you've had way too much capital come into the bond market in a short period of time and that you get some kind of reflex rally in yields over the you know next couple of months and that coincides with nothing breaks in the next couple months so maybe in that scenario the rate cuts get pushed back towards the end of this year i think that would be a scenario where gold you know, it, it doesn't break out here and then maybe it corrects back down to, I mean, looking at the weekly chart, you know, maybe the upper 1800s possibly. So it's it's something like that that could cause gold to, you know, not make the breakout this week and then struggle for a few months. But I, I think there's just too many. I, I don't really see something like that being sustainable beyond a couple of months because there's too many bullish factors for gold. I mean, you have the economy that's likely to roll over in you know the the third quarter it looks like if it's not going to roll over already i mean you have that and at the same time you know when you go from zero rates to 5% rates in basically a year you know we have these problems with some banks failing that's just going to be the tip of the iceberg i mean it's there's not just that and then there's not going to be any problems after that I see more, you know, something else breaking, you know, maybe multiple things are at risk of breaking over the coming months, you know, and, and then at the same time, you know, you have the potential issues with the economy and the Fed having to shift policy. So I, I just think that what we've seen recently is just a small preview of what could be coming over the months and quarters ahead. And then if we just, if we look at gold techni technically, you know, I, I pointed out the the relative strength and it's you know rallied back to the 2000 resistance area another thing i remember a couple of months ago we were talking about the uh the correction that gold had and how if you're in a real bull market the early corrections tend to be no more than seven or eight percent maybe ten percent at the most and so that correction from the 1900s down to the i think 1815 i mean that was eight eight and a half percent so you know and, and of course gold was able to rebound and surpass that high so it, it's acting like it's in a bull market and on top of that another thing is if you look at gdx and breadth thrust i don't mean to go way too long on this answer but gdx is close to triggering one of the two breadth thrusts that i watch so that's i mean that that's another really strong indicator of course if if gold makes the strong close you know we'll we'll trigger that breadth thrust and and definitely probably the other one so there's just too many technical and macro fundamental factors that are lining up in favor for this market. But, you know, that being said, I, I, I think I did make the case with, you know, you could get a reflex rally and bond yields and maybe nothing breaks for a couple months. I think that would be the bearish case for gold. OK, so Jordan, you're bullish gold. I get that. Look, even to your point that interest rates went up so much in the last year and a bit, gold still did pretty well. Yeah, it dropped about 22 percent from a high. But that recent high was also on the back of a war starting, too. So quite frankly, I think gold did do well in this environment. Is there any chance in your eyes that GDX or GDXJ actually get back to those all time highs of over a decade ago now? Yeah, they will. They'll get back to those highs and, and go much higher. It, of course, it depends on your time frame. I'm just pulling up a chart because, yeah, I mean, it has been a while. We've been in a secular bear market. So GDX, basically, if it doubled from here or went up about 97% or so or 95%, it, 
it would be at a new all time high. Yes, I absolutely see that happening. I mean, again, we're we're on the cusp of entering in it not into not only a new cyclical bull market for gold, but this is a new secular bull for gold as well. And we see gold break out. The, the, this is this move is not going to stop at you know 2600 gold or 3000 gold which is the first measured upside target uh when it, you know whenever we make that breakout i think gold has a chance to double in the two years that follow and you know in addition to that you know depending on other factors that the breakout move and run that might go a little bit even beyond a doubling and if you see that sharp of a move, you know, within two or two and a half years, there's not going to be that much cost inflation to keep up with that. Even if you're just factoring in, let's factor in 3,000 gold in the next 18 months, and you're looking at, like, like, let's just say the average company, their all in cost of production is 12 or 1,300. And so looking at, you know, where gold is right now. So what's their margin is like 700 bucks on that. I mean, their margin, seeing gold just break out and go to 3000, that margin is probably going to double. So, you know, not that that does, not that that necessarily means that the miners are going to, you know, double exactly, but you know, the miners and the valuations have also been really low because you're not in the bull market. So you get into a real bull and you look at where the valuations are, the valuations will get much bigger. I mean, a- absolutely, we're going to see new highs in GDX and GDXJ and the the mining ETFs. I, I have no doubt about that if we're going into a new real bull market. It's just math and the fact that costs are not going to keep up as much or move as fast as metals prices. However, the, I'm thinking about the next two years, like the next 24 months. You get into you know the next three or four years, you get towards the second half of that time frame. That's when you could see cost inflation start picking up and maybe the huge moves and the metals start to slow down. You know, money flows into other areas, then they could get hit again. But you know, I, I see this being at least a decade long secular bull and, and maybe a bit longer. But uh, I, I do think in the next couple of years it's it's possible that the minor ETFs can make do all the time highs. Well, Jordan, it's music to people's ears probably to hear that. And it's been a long time coming. And I would submit that even some of the costs have already pulled back as far as the cost of fuel, the cost of cement, cost of lumber, cost of chemical reagents. We've already seen that pull back, which should be helping the margins to some degree. I guess the other question people probably wonder is what about silver? Silver has not even gotten close to breaking out to a new all-time high. When gold finally does break out and it starts pulling the sector up with it, are you expecting silver to eventually make a run at its all-time high of around $49, $50? Or is it just going to be exciting to see it get into the 30s? Well, I just wrote an article about silver and relative performance a week or so ago. And the interesting thing is, at least in the periods that I looked at, Usually first, gold breaks a key level, like gold breaks 1,000, gold breaks 1,375. Usually gold breaks that key level first, and then silver follows. And silver's outperformance really, really accelerates when it's able to break its own resistance. So you go back to 2020. I mean, I'm looking at the weekly silver chart, and, you know, 18, 19 bucks breaking above that in 2020 was really significant. Of course, you know, silver did a moonshot for only three or four months at that point. And it was really, really outperforming in terms of the ratio. The same thing happened in the end of 2010 when it had that huge breakout. I'm looking at the chart. I mean, nobody remembers how fast the move went from about, you know, went from like 18 bucks to 50 in 10, 11 months or so. So when when silver breaks a key resistance, that's when its outperformance really accelerates. But, you know, typically the silver stocks will probably sniff that out and lead beforehand. But looking at silver here and now, it's that, you know, 26, 27, 28, that zone of resistance is really, really significant. And I think that if silver, you know, we get into a new bull market, if and when silver is able to break that level, that's when you'll see outperformance really accelerate. So silver from here, you know, going from 23 to, you know, 27, 28, having to break that, like that could take a little bit of time. That's going to be a grind because of the, all the supply at that level. 
But if silver is able to punch above 28 with a weekly or monthly close, you know, then you can see it move more aggressively. It gets into the 30s, 35, 37, you know, pr- fairly quickly. So, yes, I mean, this you know, a big reason for silver's underperformance along with the stocks is we've been in a secular bear market. So we need a secular bull market for silver to outperform gold. Now, I will say economically, if we go into a recession, it will be interesting to see how silver performs. So silver could trend higher with gold at the same time it would probably underperform and so technically you would look at the impact or the the problem for silver would be if you go into a recession and silver has this really stiff resistance at 26 to 28 that could slow down silver you know significantly in the you know medium term potentially but again you know circling back to your question and just to repeat my answer Look for silver to really, really outperform when it's able to chew through that 26 to 28 zone. Okay. It really does just sound like we need gold to prove to the market that it'll break out and hold a breakout level. And then it sounds like silver and the gold stocks and the silver stocks will follow. Uh, I know it feels like we've talked about this for a while, but Jordan, it was really one thing that stuck in my head when I was away is just how much this sector simply needs gold to break out. The stocks are just hanging around. Some are doing better. Many of them are trades at this moment. But the fact of the matter is a breakout in the underlying asset, the underlying commodity, well, that could do wonders for the overall, the whole sector. Jordan, thank you as always for your time. We'll chat next week. Have a great rest of your week.